Hey everybody, welcome to this live. This live today, well first of all I want to say I'm so happy that you're here whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay. Uh, today's live is going to be on blacking out and the darkness that we fall into from drinking so much that we do black out, we do pass out, and then all of the self-loathing and the self-hatred that follows that. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's live. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Iris Sirianni. I am a self-love coach and a spiritual mentor, and I help people heal through self-love so that they don't need to rely on alcohol or drugs to cope with their life. So now let's talk about this situation. If you've ever struggled um, with any type of dependency on anything really to, and, and especially alcohol in this particular case, to cope with your life, you are probably familiar if you've experienced that blacking out situation. Um, the, the guilt and the shame and the depression and the embarrassment that you feel um, afterwards. And I know for me, I've been there myself. And I think what these situations require is a lot of love for ourselves and a lot of compassion and understanding. And I think that we should always have a lot of love and understanding and compassion for ourselves at all times, but particularly during this time, because all of the self-loathing and the self-hatred and the beating ourselves up that happens, it's not helpful to that part of us, that wounded part of us that is allowing ourselves to get carried away to that extent. So I think that, you know, having that understanding and that love and compassion for ourselves, I think that that's really important. And I do believe that there is a deep inner part of ourselves that feels a sense of not belonging a lot of the times. At least that was true for me. And, and sometimes even that coupled with any other type of unhealed pain and unhealed trauma and then life overwhelm, it can all bring us to a place where everything kind of keeps on escalating and escalating and escalating. But, and, but again, you, we have to bring ourselves back for having compassion and love for that part of us that is trying to work through it and that is trying to survive and that is trying to feel some sense of relief. Um, so, but let's, let's talk about this a little bit more. Having said all of that, I think it is a real pivotal time to do some self reflection and really looking into why, why am I doing that? Why do I let myself get into that? Um, I know for me, there were two reasons that I got, I fell into that level, but like that next level of um, drinking. And the first reason was the people that I was surrounding myself with. And that's no blame against the people who who we surround ourselves. It's not their fault because we all have to be personally responsible and account accountable for ourselves and, and what we do with our lives. But I know for me, the environment that I was in, the people that I was surrounding myself with, they did happen to be very heavy drinkers. When I drank, by myself, I never drank to the point of 
um, passing out or blacking out or doing some very ridiculous things when we're not in our right mind. So it was always in the presence of other people who were um, heavy drinkers. And whether it is a character flaw within me or not, it's just something that I have uh, come to heal within myself. But I was very much that person who really wanted to get a sense of belonging and to fit in because for the longest time I really didn't feel like I actually belonged anywhere. Part of that was because I had disconnected or I lost my connection from God or the universe and I think I'm going to talk about that because I think that that's also uh, really important on our healing journey but for me it is was about healing that part of me that did feel like I didn't belong anywhere and that I did want to fit in somewhere so for me my pattern was to just allow myself to be so easily influenced by the people that I surrounded myself with and eventually it got to the point where I was okay trying not to fit in somewhere where I didn't belong where I didn't fit in and then so I so I already talked about point number two was that that healing from wanting to fit in. And the other part of this, as I also mentioned, was that feeling that there is something greater that we can connect to. We can call it God, we can call it the universe, spirit, the infinite source of love. For me, what really helped me in which what was really a pivotal point for me was when I finally surrendered all of my pain, all of my suffering, all of me trying to figure life out on my own to do it my own way. When I finally, it's almost like that eat, pray, love moment where Julia Roberts Roberts is on her knees and she's praying and she's asking for help and she's told to just go back to bed. It's that feeling where you finally say, you know what, I don't know what to do anymore. I've made a mess of my life. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I belong. I don't know how to heal this. I don't know how to fix myself. I, I just don't know what to do. And when you surrender all of that to this invisible source, this sense of peace washes over you. And for a moment and several moments after that as well, you feel like you're not so alone in the world. And you feel like, okay, maybe, maybe if I just surrender it, maybe I'll find my way through. And you do find your way through. And when you surrender all of your pain and all of your troubles, um, it's not like everything is in your life is fixed miraculously. We do have to peel back the layers to discover the parts of us that don't feel worthy, that don't feel good enough, that feel like they don't belong. But I firmly believe, and it has been my ex personal experience, that the more we heal, the more we return to our own inner self and, and really change the relationship that we have with ourself, we are build a stronger connection to God or the universe. And that in and of itself gives us the sense that we do belong, that we are loved, that we are cared for, that we're not down here doing things on our own. There is actually a invisible force and an invisible source that has always been there for us and helping us guide us through life. But we still need to do the work and we still need to do the healing. But I do speak from personal experience that when you do surrender and when you do start to heal, it you don't need things externally to, to cope with your life. We're not here to just 
cope with our life. We're here to live our life and we're here to experience all that we can in this life. So that, my friends, was my topic for today. Um, let me see if there are any questions. Let me see. Oh, hi. Hi, Naila. Hi. Okay. I've got like a little bit of a precarious setup here today, but it seems to be working. Now, listen, if you would like some help and support on this healing journey, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough session with me. I will leave a link. Uh, below in the captions below and there's also a link in my bio that you can click at on and uh, let me know in the comments did you get something valuable out of this I hope it was valuable for you and I am now doing live uh, Instagram videos on Tuesday and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and so if you're able to join, that would be wonderful. And until I see you on Thursday or the next time, good, take good care.